All organisms, and particularly humans, are incredibly complex. In humans, much of that information is encoded in our DNA, and we're just at the early stages of understanding the language in which DNA is written. And I think we're going to gradually know more and more about how the human body works. In detail, there's still a lot to be found out. One of the motivations for the project was to assemble a population that could be used as a control population in genetic studies in Britain, and indeed it already has been quite successfully. In parallel with that, we're able to look at the genetic composition of the British population and how that varies in different parts of the country. And then we were able to take those genetic clusters and plot them on maps of the UK. And that revealed a very striking and really exquisite picture. It turns out uh, that people in Cornwall in the southwest of the UK form a genetically distinct group, different from people in Devon, which is the county just to the east, and the people in Devon in turn are different from people to the east of that. What we have done is actually to collect blood samples from volunteers because they give us DNA, that's the genetic material that we study, and we're taking three-dimensional pictures with a complex camera setup that give us a complete statistical representation of their face. From that we can make measurements that try and pull out the features of faces that we see as different and to see if we can identify the genetics that goes with that. We're amazingly lucky to be able to do what we do. To know something about our origins, where we come from, and can we relate that to the history and the archaeology? It's not very often you see science thought of as a part of our culture, but it is. <laughs>